Welcome back. This is weeknights, or five nights a week. We give you the latest, the greatest, the shameless, the favorites. I'll just add it the favorites for fun. Uh, <clears throat> of the entertainment industry. Me, 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 me. Do, re, fo, fa, so, na, ti, do. The Human Torch was denied a bank loan. That's from uh, Anchorman. Anyway, uh, I am not Anchorman. I am a different man. I am JD, a.k.a. He Who Pods, uh, a.k.a. Rearview Mirror, because I got the specs on a little bit of reading happening today, a.k.a. The Whistler. If you were here yesterday, you know the vibes. And if you listen to Rabbit Hole, dropping June... Thank you very much, June 27th. And you know the vibes, too. Now, my non-whistling co-host, who you be? I am Dash, a.k.a. Dashing D, a.k.a. the real king of R&B. And let's get this show on the road. That's (laughs) it. (laughs) So, you know, we often hear the phrase, man up. Yes. Right? People always say, oh, oh, come on, stop stop acting like that. Man up. I was going to say a word I can't say two minutes into the pot. But people always say, be tougher. Don't let life kick you down. Man up. Well, this weekend just passed. A new term was brought into the world by Tiffany Haddish. And that is a song by Tiffany Haddish. That's right. Not a stand-up comedy show. A song by Tiffany Haddish. And that song is called Woman Up. I just want to say real quick. First of all, shout out to... Bless you. Thank you. I just want to say real quick. Shout out to P for sending me the record because I had no idea that this record existed. And I had no idea that Tiffany Haddish sang. But apparently she's been putting out music since 2017. I had no idea that Tiffany Haddish did music of any kind. Did you know that? Me either. But I went to the streaming apps, as you like to say, the streamers. and. Tiffany Haddish has music out since 2017. Multiple projects. So I thought that was interesting. But we have here a single with a music video. And uh, I think you should start this one. Why? You know, because it's, it's, a, it's a woman's song. For women, by women. I don't know what I'm supposed to say about it. Honestly. Um... I mean, I have a lot to say, but, you know, I didn't know Tiffany Haddish sang. I didn't know Tiffany Haddish sang. I didn't know Tiffany Haddish made music. Um, when I pressed play, I didn't know what to expect, but it wasn't what I heard when I pressed play. <laughs> I didn't really think much of it. Um, I thought it was interesting that she makes music. Okay. Also, it seems like she's trying to take accountability for some of the things that have happened, or things that I shouldn't say some, but things that have happened over the last few years. She's kind of gotten herself into hot water in a few different ways. Um, So it sounded like... It sounded like that's what... uh, she was trying to address and i mean i guess that's cool like you know we we talk a lot about people expressing themselves through music yes um again I, this is just not something that i was privy to before but um yeah i mean you know cool <laughs> i think i i think it's uh i think it's interesting i think it's interesting I don't necessarily want music from Tiffany Haddish. 
Okay. I'm being honest. Um, but it's cool. It's, it's something she does. That it's you know a, a path she's she's on she's on in addition to the other things that she does. Um, I'm I'm gonna go out go ahead and say that I prefer her when she's in her actress slash comedian slash host bag. Okay. Um, I don't really. I don't think I connected with it uh, in a way that would make me want like more music from her. Um, so, yeah, but I do think it's cool to uh, put yourself out there and um, hold yourself accountable for things that you, you know, things that you've done or things that you've been held to the fire for. So I respect that. Okay, do you like this new phrase, woman up? Will you be saying woman up? No. Okay, did you like the song? I thought it was okay. Um, okay. I, like I said, I just, I don't know. I didn't con- I didn't really connect with it. Because um, it sounded too white? I don't <laughs> No, that's not what I thought. But oh, I'm asking for a specific reason. That's why. No, I'll, I'll explain. So I, yeah, I thought I didn't, I didn't, I didn't think of it as white or black or anything like that. I just thought, oh, this is okay. This, I actually, when I first heard it or watched the video, I was wondering, is was she serious because she is a comedian? So I kind of wondered, like, is this? A joke? I didn't know if she was serious. I didn't know that music was something that she did. So when I first saw it, I, it took me a moment to realize that it was like something real that she did. I kind of thought she was make like you know just kind of doing a funny thing. I was I wasn't sure that it was, and I guess that's why I'm like I don't really I'm not really looking for music from her. I don't. I don't think she did something that like really wowed me to the point of me wanting to listen to more music from her. Um, but you know, no shade. I feel like if, you know, if there's, there's a lane for everyone. I'm sure there are people who connect with what she's saying. As far as the phrase goes, woman up, I just don't speak like that. So I, <laughs> you don't, you don't tell your, you don't tell your brother to, to man up. No, I don't really use that. Um, yeah, I don't really use I don't really use phrases like that. So I, I don't think I would ever say. I would probably say it maybe to be funny, but I would never like to have a serious conversation and be like, "You need to woman up." Right. I'm gonna woman up. I don't. <laughs> I don't talk like that. You better woman up, okay? Yeah, I better. Um, so I, I thought, I thought quite the opposite. I thought that it was interesting that she was singing. Uh, she's no Whitney Houston, but we've definitely heard people who sound worse. Um, yeah, uh, it's, it's a jam. It's a very, uh, pop sounding, uh, up-tempo song. And it sounded very white to me. I said, this don't sound like our kind of music. This sounds like I'm trying to appeal to white audiences. And that was interesting because this video was in quote unquote middle America. And she had cheerleaders dancing in the yard with her as she scolded herself. Um, I said, oh, this is really all super interesting. And then that's when I discovered she did music before that because I went to go look at the credits. I said, I don't think Tiffany Haddish wrote this song. I want to see who wrote this song. And I went, and that's how I found out she had all that other music. And I found out <clears throat> in the credits, it says that it's Diane Warren who wrote the song. And it's an older white woman. And I said, oh, okay, yeah. Because this sounds like a pop anthem kind of song that belongs in, like, high school musical or something like this sound like this could have been in mean girls or something that's what this sounds like to me 
mean, she, the, the higher warrior is a heavy hitter. So she, she, she definitely got the best of the best. Oh yeah, no, no, no. I'm not. I'm not trying to throw shade at at, at Miss Warren. I'm just <laughs> saying that when I heard the music, this didn't have any of our lingo, any of our drums, any of the things that kind of. It didn't sound urban, as they would say. No, I, and I, so I said, this sounds like something that would be in like a motion picture. This sounds like the scene where you know the main character is down on her luck and doesn't want to go to school, and here comes the mom busting in singing "Woman Up." You know, sound like that kind of thing. And I was like, I don't know if, T- if Tiffany Haddish wrote this. So that's why I went and looked and find out about who wrote the song. And then I was like, oh yeah, no, that, that makes sense. But yeah, listen, Warren gave her a record that's gonna get played. Oh, because uh, that's what she writes. If you look at right. Diane Warren's disc, uh, catalog, songwriting catalog, she has, written, she has written some very, very popular songs. And, and I thought that was smart. A lot. I said, I don't know popular songs i should say she's been writing since i think the 80s yeah that's what i saw um so you know i thought that was really smart to go and tap Mm -hmm. you know someone who can do exactly what you want someone who's going to give you something that's going to hit it out the park um i thought that was smart i said okay they got you know people like when popular terms are remixed and so You've done that. You got a song that sounds very pop. Uh, something like, you know, very radio friendly, you know, car friendly. And so I think all of that is smart. Uh, so I actually was on the other side. I'm not going to play it. I'm not going to say woman up uh, unless I'm joking and probably won't say it much then. But I thought this was cool and I thought this was smart. Yeah. No, good for her. But there are some people who feel differently. There are some critiques happening out in the world really? right now. And uh, one of them was a legend. Our very own Funk Flex. I'm just going to read here this article. It says, Funk Flex has reined in some of his dislike towards Tommy Richmond after hearing his new single, Devil is a Lie. The legendary DJ was previously vocal about his hatred of Richmond's hit single, Million Dollar Baby. But he appears to be doing a bit of a U-turn after hearing his latest drop. Writing on X, Thursday, June 13th, Flex said, New Tommy Richmond in five minutes. Hot 97, Devil is a Lie, I Like This Song. Funk Flex recently criticized Tommy Richmond, dedicating airtime on Hot 97 to ranting against the rising star. Quote, remember, if you're someone that likes this song, you're, you are a clown, he said while queuing up the track on his show. Quote, I don't know what the rest of his songs sound like. I don't even know who Tommy Richmond is. It sounds like a shoe store. Now, we're going to document his hot garbage. This hot garbage, excuse me. We're going to play it. Though, I know you want to hear it. I wonder if this is big at clubs. Flex then played the beginning of the song, adding, See, this part is deceiving. Like, it might be a good song. Watch the terrible part as it comes in. You hear the tin can drums? Hold on, let me, let me just finish up right here about Funk uh, uh, real quick. Despite not being a fan, Funk Flex is an outlier in America with Million Dollar Baby being one of the biggest hits of 2024. It debuted at number two on the Billboard Hot 100 in May after racking up 38 million official streams, 302,000 in early radio airplay audience, and 4,000 downloads in its first week. I'm 
confused because I, I'm confused about a couple of things. Talk about it. Why is Million Dollar Baby playing on Hot 97? I have no idea. Because so, I'm frustrated. But he's, it sounded to me like he's saying he doesn't want to play it, but he has to. I, the, 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 as far as I know, the radio stations have what, playlists? Okay. Well, Funk Flex, Funk Flex gets to do his own thing. So his his show is a little different than you know the average show that's just playing the same twelve songs. But he still answers to people, doesn't he? Yes, but if he has to put a the song in his rotation. Then wouldn't he have to? Uh, I don't know that answer. I know that yes, he has a boss. Yes, there are parameters in which he must, you know, stay. He must stay within the parameters of whatever rules they put together. Uh, but what I don't know is what those rules are. I know he kind of has the freedom to curate his show as he sees fit. Um, but I don't know much more than that about the details of how his show is composed, run, curated, etc. I mean, I don't care for his critique of the song because I, I just, I feel like if you like the song, you're a clown. Like, all of that is not necessary. But if you, if you, if you, Funkmaster Flex, don't like something, it's fine. Like, you could just not like it and be okay with the fact that other people do like it. Right. But I guess my, my confusion is just that I don't really listen to the radio these days, but. As far as Hot 97 goes, it seems like a strange song to be playing on Hot 97. I assume the reason why it's playing, why they're playing it is because it's popular, because it's gone viral. Um, but other than that, I don't really see, I don't really see why it would be there. So I don't, I just, honestly, Funk Flex comes off as a grumpy old man. Um, yes, we we talked a long time ago, um, you know, on that other show about gatekeepers and yep. whether or not Funk Flex is remains a gatekeeper. And I really don't think he is. I mean, it especially shows with something like this, like his word is 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 just that his. It's just his opinion at this point. It's not making or breaking anyone's career where I think maybe there was a time where it would matter to people. Right. But today it's just like, it just comes off like him being salty and grumpy. Yeah, I agree. So, I don't know. I think it's okay to say you don't like a record. Right. I think it's okay to say, I wonder, is this big in the clubs? But I agree that when you start seeing that the people who are fans of the record are clowns, breaking down that, oh, here's the deceiving part. You hear the tin can drums. You sound, you just sound like an old grumpy nigga hating. Uh, and I don't think that's good. There's nothing wrong with having your preferences, but you have a large audience. And to put this young man down, it's kind of whack. Uh, again, nothing wrong with saying I don't like the record. That's okay. It's okay to critique music. But I think when you start calling the fans of it clowns and trying to uh, pick apart the record piece by piece on live air, it's unnecessary and it's distasteful. Yeah. And it's even okay to say... But even if you don't like the drums, sorry. Even if you don't like the drums, you'd be like, yeah, listen. I, I wish this had better drums. But, but, oh, y'all hear those tin can drums, though? Yes, yes come like, on. Like. It's, and that's fine. And it's even okay to say this song, from your perspective, this song is only popular because it's gone viral on TikTok. That's also okay to say. Agreed. Um, he didn't quite say that. He kind of sidestepped that. Because right. he was, I feel like he got so wrapped up in tearing it down 
Yep. Um, but I think that is the point that's living under the surface here. I think that's why he has such a disdain for it because he knows that um, that that's why it's circulating. He because gets of TikTok? That. Yeah. Okay. Or just the internet. I mean, it's not just TikTok, but it's 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 a viral sound on TikTok. That's how I learned about the song. Um, gotcha. And I'm sure that's how a lot of people, when those, <laughs> those by the time it hits your For You page, it's already out of here. So yes, that's true. I imagine, and then and then you go over to Instagram, you're hearing it over there too. Obviously, people are doing the same Absolutely. in both places. So yep. I think that's just like a lot of songs, just like Tyla Water. I mean, and we like Tyla. We like water, right? A lot of people outside of that universe, the 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 influencers and whatnot, like water. But it did go viral, and that's why a lot of us know about it. Yes. So I just, I don't know. I feel like you have to... If you're going to be a player in this arena, yep. then you have to be able to move with the times. Yes. And while you might not be okay with the way everything happens, and you might not like everything that happens, you still have to, like, you, you, you still have to realize that, like, Life is moving, even though you're staying the same. Life is moving forward without you, with or without you. So, right. yeah, you're on the radio and you're doing your job and you're doing what you've been doing. But maybe the way, maybe your approach has to evolve the way that music and the way that the sharing of music and all of that has evolved. Maybe that's... What, and again, I'm not saying he should like the song. I just feel like the way he approached talking about the song yeah, is the delivery. Boring, you know? So Yeah, it was the delivery. I agree. I think yeah. again, nothing wrong with critiquing. Uh nothing wrong with saying you don't like something, but you don't have to completely destroy it and come at the fans of the record like he just just went too far. It's okay to critique, you know, even if, again, even if you don't like the drums, you know, I think these drums are weak. They should have used 808 drums or, you know, maybe if they layered the drums, if they stacked the drums, it would have had a better impact. Cool. Funk Flex is knowledgeable in music. He knows how to speak in a way that it will be looked at as a professional music critique. Not what he did, and that was intentional, and that was unnecessary. Because he himself is also trying to be shocking and go viral, so there's that. And that's and that's what, but that shouldn't have to happen at somebody else's expense. No, because there again, it's okay to say you don't like it, but you didn't have to do all that. Yeah, no, I agree. But we're talking about people hating, and people dissing, and being distasteful. So Tell yeah. us about Pharrell's alleged. Sneaky tactics. So you'll probably be able to explain this better than me, but Despicable Me 4 is about to come out. Yes. The franchise usually drops the movie somewhere around July 4th. I don't know the exact release date in case anybody... I can find out. But Despicable Me, it usually comes out like July 4th weekend. Um, so I know this because I've seen them, <laughs> by the way. <laughs> Random fact, but look at that. According to Google, uh -huh. it will be released on July third, twenty twenty four. Yeah, because I've taken my nieces to see it. Like the, it was like our July fourth thing, and then and then obviously you know life changed a little bit for a couple of years. But um, so the movie is coming out. Pharrell, you know, Pharrell makes music, obviously. And yep. Pharrell, Pharrell is often tapped to make music for, for soundtracks. Yes, especially after he did Happy for Despicable Me. What was it, two? Yeah, I think it was two. Um, Go ahead, I'm fine. So there's a new song 
Um, there's a scene in, in, in Despicable Me 4. Gru gets in his car. He's driving. It is Despicable Me 2, yes. Okay. He's driving. He's driving. Some, I don't know where Gru is driving. But the, the point is, Pharrell makes a song for the Despicable Me 4 soundtrack. And he's saying yeah. some very specific things. And people yes, think yes. that Pharrell is responding to Drake. People think that Pharrell is sneak dissing Drake use and using Gru to do it. <laughs> Which yep. I think is really funny. But yeah. Yeah, the line is some of your dirt has come to light. Mm -hmm. Or lines, sorry. Mm -hmm. Lie detector time. Hey, what are you hiding? Mm -hmm. Nothing wrong. Being private. Make sure it ain't wrong. The song is called Double Life. Those are the lyrics that people think uh, apply here to the diss. Do you believe that? I think it's possible, yes. Do I, do, am I going to put all my chips and go all in on this one? No, but I do think it's possible. Uh, but again, I'll say unnecessary because Kendrick already took care of it for you. So, you know, nothing really to say here. You're not a rapper. And so, but also on the flip side of that coin, if you feel like, yo, cats threw dirt on my name and I want to respond, you have the right to do so. Uh, and I, I will say this is kind of Drake's style. Drake may not put it on a soundtrack. But Drake usually sneak disses on records that get played a lot. Yeah. He knows the kind of records that's like, oh, this is going to be a popular record. Let me talk about Dash one time on this popular record. And so Pharrell knows this is the main song for the soundtrack of Despicable Me, the movie Despicable Me. Uh, and it's very possible that he's pulling a Drake on Drake and saying, all right, let's, let me, let me throw some jabs on this popular record. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It's possible. I don't know. And, and if you read it, it does seem to have some credence, you know, uh, I mean, it, it because fits. Some, some, some things were, you know, it fits. Two million secrets, you know, it fits. Even if that wasn't his intention, it, definitely fits the narrative that people are creating around it which yeah you know is going to give the song some more play absolutely it's just because it's on a soundtrack doesn't mean that people are going to listen to it outside of the soundtrack but um or outside of the movie but i think that this will give it a little boost um give it a lot more buzz than maybe they originally expected it to to have right. um so yeah, I mean, and if I was for real, I would not confirm or deny. Never, no. Just let, just go ahead and capitalize yeah. on on people's speculations. That's enough. Especially because that's just going to drive more streams, yeah, and more ticket sales. Yeah, no, I'm here for that. I think that's perfect, and I think it's kind of funny to imagine that that's exactly what he's doing using a right. Using a children's movie to sneak this Drake is kind of funny. Getting all the kids to diss Drake would be smart. Yeah. Because they'll just be in the supermarkets singing all the Drake disses. Listen, I saw a video the other day of a large group of children rapping to Not Like Us. I saw that as well. That, oh, I, okay. It made it, the, the caption said it made it to the kids. Yes, it did. Yes, so, I mean, anything is possible is my point. Yes, I I agree. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, the teenagers definitely know the records. Oh, they were not teenagers, though. No, I know. These were little kids. I know. Yeah, they were. I saw it, yeah. But I'm just saying, the, the teens know it, so eventually it was going to... Oh, yeah. To the little sisters, triple, the triple little down. brothers. Yep. Exactly. <laughs> anyway... That's all we got for today, right? That's it. Short and sweet. Short and sweet. Thank you for being here. Thank you for reviewing, watching, subscribing, commenting. We appreciate you, and we will be back manana. Bye.